Welcome to another episode of the Create Your Vibrant Life podcast. Today, I have Aichol Francis as my amazing guest. And Aichol, let's just start with you introducing yourself and then see where this goes. Hello, hello. I am so honored to be here. Thank you for the invitation to come on. Um, I, I, do you know, whenever anybody goes like, introduce yourself, I'm like, how do you put yourself into a box? <laughs> you know, and give yourself labels and titles. So I'll try my best. Um, my name is Aitel Francis. I am a coach, an entrepreneur, a guide and mentor is probably the best way I can summarize what I do. So I work with mostly women, but men as well to help them to see the unseen in themselves so they can reach their greatest potential because often we can't see like the blind spots in ourselves so I do work with them to reveal that so that they can see <laughs> all the amazingness that I see in them as well oh unseen oh you know like you and I were talking like what do we want to talk about and we're we were both like let's just let it unfold mm -hmm. That feels like part of the unseen, like let the unseen right. be unfold. So yeah. can you share a little bit more about how, how, like anything about the unseen and how you, what, how you help people see themselves? Yeah, it's often like, and it's funny because my, my mom was a teacher and she always taught us this as well. She said, everybody has a gift and when it's nurtured and it can be brought out of them, like every single person that comes to the planet has a unique gift. So she used to see her role as a teacher in nurturing that and bringing it out of people. So I am very much of the same way, but more on the spiritual side. So I see that everybody has a spiritual gift and they often aren't aware of it in themselves because they've been taught to shut it down or to hide it, or it's not safe to show that, or we don't do that kind of thing around here, all the stories that we've been told in childhood. So by working with people and just spending more time in their energy, I start to see what that gift is in them. But obviously I can't go like, oh, you're a whatever. <laughs> that's That's not my place to say that. So I will walk with them, guide them, ask them questions as they remember who they are. And that really is about what the unseen is, because we came to this planet with everything intact, right? It's not like we came here broken or we need to be fixed or anything. We came here whole, but we forget who we are. So really, it's like a walking with somebody along that path so that they can remember the wholeness of who they are and that includes that unique gift to them mm -hmm. so where, did you know your gifts when you were growing up yeah I certainly knew I had some experiences from quite young but when I shared that with my mum it got completely shut down. She was like, no, this is your imagination. We don't talk about that stuff, which was very out of character for her. So I learned like un before the age of even 10, like, oh, it's not safe to do that. We don't talk about that. I'm making it up, push it down, like stuff it away. You, you know, it, it, like it really was this message of this is not safe to express yourself in the fullness of who you really are. And I carried that for a very long time, even though deep down I knew it to be true. <laughs> and I still kind of experimented with it and never like shut it off completely, but I never outwardly expressed it for a very, very long time. Wow. And so how did you, how did you uncover it for your own self? Because it got to the point where it was more painful and uncomfortable <laughs> to not allow it to be seen than to actually allow it. You know, I did the whole like in teenage years trying to fit in and be like everybody else. And that led to anxiety, depression, drinking, drug use, all of those things, because I was so out of alignment with who I am. It just felt awful being in my own skin so it was only when I started allowing the expression of myself and just vibrated who I am just allowed that to come through it just shifted gears completely like almost almost instantly you know and this is the thing that like if I can teach my children one thing it's like just be who you are 
you know, because mm-hmm. they're, they're, they're discovering, you know, my eldest ones are off at university and they're going like some of the friends I'm meeting think I'm weird. And it's like, no, that's they're just jealous because they have to drink to be like that. <laughs> you know, That's just who you are naturally. So that's the thing I really want to instill in them is don't change to try and fit the circle you're currently in because your circles change all the way through life. And when you vibrate who you are, like who you really, really are authentically, then those friends and those people that are just like you will be attracted to you anyway. So you don't have to change. You just unapologetically be yourself. And that's the thing I, I really, really do on a daily basis want to instill in my children so that they don't have to go through what I did. You know, the oh, I need to fit in and everybody thinks I'm weird, so I'll try this. And it was just so uncomfortable. Yeah. And so it was there, you know, for, for a lot of people, it's like an, it's like something happens and then mm-hmm. that brings that into the open. Did anything happen to you? Did have experience or something that like, okay, I, I'm no longer, I can't do that anymore. I have to step into my power Mm -hmm. yeah a big part of it was I was very controlling so I would be very controlling of my environment of myself the way I looked the way I ate the way I worked out like every single aspect of my life was really controlled because then it was like well if I control everything nobody's gonna see that I'm weird (laughs) I'm gonna get away with it I can hide it so even having like when I first had my children I was very controlling over you know like the house had to be immaculate and all of these kind of things and what happened for me when like everything fell down so to speak was realizing I had no control whatsoever and that was when my mum got sick and she transitioned within eight weeks it was very very quick you know from she was sick one day she got a diagnosis and within eight weeks she'd left the planet and it just floored me like it really pulled the rug out from under me and I was like whoa I have no control over anything like all of these things that I thought I was controlling and that everything was in its box and everything was where it was meant to be suddenly everything was thrown up in the air so I had to question all the foundations that I'd built this control and all these beliefs upon and understand that none of it was true and had to completely rejig and rechange. And you you begin to see what like through an experience like that as well, is that trying to control stuff, it's like we have no control whatsoever. And it also makes you see like how precious and how short life is. Are you going to spend the rest of your life trying to be something you're not to impress people you don't care about? you know and it's like it was just like in that moment in the unraveling for the months and even years after that it just all started fitting together you know it was like none of this makes sense I have to do it a different way Mm, wow what a profound experience Mm -hmm. and my my sense is that it probably took like a, a, it was up and down, up and down till you, Absolutely. you, had, to, you, you had to ride that wave. Right. Yeah, it wasn't like within a week of my mom transitioning, I had, you know, I saw the lights and angels trumpeted and I was like, oh, I have the meaning to life. I mean, I actually remember me and my sister like looking through my mom's things for a notebook going, she must have written down the meaning to life somewhere. Like she can't just have left, you know? Yeah. And there was nothing because you know, I mean, she was really ill towards the end anyway, so she couldn't write things down. But it was just this feeling of somebody must know the meaning of life. Somebody must, you know, so that took me on an even deeper search within myself to go like, what, what is this all about? What is this? Where am I really going to? What am I doing here? And I'd ask these questions from when I was really small, because I've asked other people that and you go, from when you were a child, did you not like go, what am I doing here? Like, mm-hmm. like why am I here again? <laughs> like, I thought I'd done the work. Why am I being dropped off on the planet again? It was always that kind of feeling. And other people were like, no, I've never had those thoughts. <laughs> so it just, because of all of that, it just led to a deeper exploration of asking those kind of questions. Like, what's my purpose? You know, is this really what it's all about? Is this as good as it gets? Is this all I'm going to do on the, you know, I was, surely I'm here to make a difference. Surely there's something. 
So it was it was much more of those kind of questions that I really sat with rather than just getting into the control of the day to day things, and which is what I've been doing previously. Mm. It's so funny you mentioned that, like, why am I dropped off here? Because that that was my, I remember I was five years old and I was thinking that. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I'm not supposed to be here. I don't want to be here. Why am I here? Mm-hmm. No one understood that. Mm-hmm. And this is, this is what I was saying about when you stay in the frequency of who you really are, you will find the people that are just like you, you know, and I, I joke with my friends now and I'm like, can you find me in kindergarten next time? Cause you took a long time this time around. <laughs> like, don't wait till I'm in my thirties or forties to come and discover me. Like find me earlier. Life's been really hard to this point. <laughs> oh my goodness. It is so true. It is so true. And I, I know I feel like I've come alive in my forties versus before this. Yeah. So tell us about um I'm I'm so this was a process and where you are today is probably mm-hmm. very different than back then. Absolutely. <laughs> That's an the understatement of the year. <laughs> the ITIL giggle is <laughs> it's just heartwarming. For for all you listeners, I've known ITIL for the last, I think, four, three, four years now. Yeah. I think I can't even remember when when I came to you. And you were one of my first guides in that program. And now we have I have the privilege of the honor of like walking mm-hmm. side by side with you Absolutely. in the transformation coaching program. It's just amazing. And so you have really been one of my guides through this mm-hmm. process. And even recently, I was like, you were coaching somebody and I was like, you were on the call. I was like, busy taking notes. I chose wisdom. <laughs> so tell us more about like, how, how, how does it feel now in comparison to the past? It's just that, that when you get to the place of knowing you can just be who you are, you, you just don't care because like people are going to judge you whatever you do. So like, why waste so much of your power and energy wondering what are other people thinking? What are they saying? They're already saying and thinking things about me before. So like, why not just show up and do what I love to do and be of service to people and let people judge me on that rather than hiding away? And because people are going to judge you for doing nothing. You know, if you're in your head and going, oh, I can't be who I am. I'll just hide away and I'll not do anything. Somebody will be judging you for that as well. So do we really want to give all of our power, all of that energy force to somebody else that has no bearing, no, just doesn't pertain to your life at all? And this is what I mean when you really sit with these things, it makes no sense. (laughs) So it gets to the point where there's like a tipping point and you go like, I just cannot do this anymore. I just cannot be something I'm not it is so painful and so uncomfortable right and for most people like at least for me like I, well I don't know if it's for most people or not I felt flat mm-hmm. that's when I was like okay like there's it, it, it there was no other way other than to to embrace this because no other there was no other door open absolutely it is and it you know and that, like that, this is why I want to instill it in my children so much. It's like, don't wait till you get to the point that I did, where it was like literally so depressed, where you're like, I just can't do this anymore. If this, if this is what life is gonna be, I don't, I don't even know if I want to do this. Like, don't take it to that point. And all of that because I was so out of alignment. Yeah. Like everything I was, I was doing the opposite. Because everybody else around me told me that who I was was wrong or that that wasn't right, or we don't fit in, or all of those things, because it was so dependent on external judgment and what other people thought of you. Oh, my God. That is but so- what you think of yourself is the most important thing of all. Yeah, that is so key. This, this, this holds so many people back, and they give their power away mm-hmm. constantly by focusing on what are people thinking of me. Mm-hmm. And living life based on other people's expectations rather than their own. Absolutely. You know, like how many times do people live a life that isn't even their own because they're living a life according to somebody else's stories or beliefs or judgments or what they say you should do. And it's like, 
you're the creator of your life. You get to choose exactly what it looks like. And when you start to get in that alignment and you start to play with it and you go like, oh, so if I do this and I think this and I go here and you start to actually get into that frequency of playfulness, that's when doors start to open because your whole vibration has changed. Wow. That's it. I want to highlight that piece, like your whole vibration (laughs) changes and therefore opportunities come in. Absolutely. It's all about frequency and energy, all of it, you know, and it, it like, you know, that, you know, I know like I'm preaching to the choir here, but you know, like when you meet somebody for the first time and you instantly, it's like, yes or no, right. you're not really judging on their appearance or how they sound or what clothes they're wearing. It's their energy that you're reading the same way you can walk into a room and you can sense the energy in a room So it's always, always about the energy. I know people who have had, you know, like all the funnels in place, had all the pieces ready for a launch and it's fallen flat. And it's because their energy wasn't in alignment with what they were launching. Whereas I know other people who haven't even had a website or a sales page and they'll launch and make like five, six, seven figures because they're so in alignment what, what it is that they're doing. It always comes back to the energy. Wow. Yeah. And so how does one for the audience, like how does one shift the energy? Do you have any, any words of wisdom? For me, the most important thing was looking at like, who am I being, Mm -hmm. you know, am am I being in alignment with who I really am? Am I being authentic? Because I think when you, when you're fake, people read that straight off, you know, and when you think of people I don't know, in industries that you might have interacted with and you're like, oh, it just doesn't feel good. It's because they're being inauthentic, you know, and even people you may have met and you can can just read that kind of fake energy. Whereas if you meet somebody that is just comfortable in their own skin, just happy being who they are, loving what they're doing, like really, really find something that you love to do as well. Because if you're getting up every day and you're going like, oh, I have to do this again. Oh, no, it's Monday. If that is the frequency that you're giving up, imagine what that's attracting to you. Whereas if you wake up and you're like, yes, (laughs) it's another day in the life of me. I am so blessed to be living how I'm living. Totally different things will be attracted to you. This is so profound, right? Like even just noticing this within, like for anyone listening, if you can even just start to practice this one piece, it's going to change the trajectory of your life. Yeah. And the the thing is, like I always tell people, it's not about like wherever you are and accepting that and allowing that and being grateful for where you are doesn't mean that you don't want to see change because we're always changing. You know, we are never still. We are constantly in motion. Everything in the universe is constantly in motion. So there's so many people get into this like, oh, well, if I accept where I am, that's saying that I don't want to change. And I'm like, you're always changing. (laughs) Like whether you like it or not, change is coming. So you can be the instigator of change. You can choose how that change is going to look, or you can sit there and passively let change happen to you, which means somebody else will be in control of the change that you're receiving. But things are always, always going to change. Mm -hmm. Now, do you have practices every day that allow you to stay in that frequency and vibration? I'm able to do things like really quickly. So I don't like sit there and do like three hour meditations or anything. As soon as I feel like something is off, if you like, I I just pause and go like, what was I thinking? What did that lead to? What, where are my thoughts? Where's my feeling? Where's my attention? Always just rechecking in with myself. If anything feels off, because it's usually going back to one of those things. Mm. And all I've always been like really easily being able to access like visual imagery. So actually seeing things in existence before they happen, like so, so clearly. And I've done that since a very young age as well. Like actually, 
you know, and again, this is what I was accused of you and your vivid imagination, like it was a bad thing, right? <laughs> so it's like, that's just part of who I am. That's part of my gift is I can't turn that off. Mm. So all, all the things that the goals that we have manifested and things in life, like I saw them as if they were actually in physical reality before they became that way. So whatever I'm working towards, I can vision that and hold that vision really clearly and set my intention towards that and connect with universal laws that will assist bring it in. We don't need to do everything by ourselves as well. This is the other thing. It's like the universe is there waiting to assist us. There are so many laws that we can work with rather against that actually brings this stuff to us a lot easier. Oh, incredible. <laughs> what is your biggest manifestation, Nigel? Um, I would say, and it's it's a crazy story, way too long for this podcast, but even meeting my husband and the amount of things that had to line up for that to happen was insane. And it was only actually, we've been together 25 years now, and it was only actually about five years ago he explained to me his side of the story and all of the things that had to align on his side for him to meet me. And I was like, what? <laughs> oh my God, like, I have all years, tell us. <laughs> <laughs> so like that whole thing in itself was just, you know, when you just can't make it up all the alignments that had to happen, but also our home and doing building work and building extension or all, all of the things, you know, and people say, oh, it can't be done. And I'm like, <laughs> because the worst thing anybody can tell me is it can't be done because I will always find a way if my energy is focused on that and my intention is focused on that there is nothing that isn't possible I will always always find a way so when people say that can't be done these things don't happen it's like step aside <laughs> sit down and watch and observe because it's coming through so I have always have such strong belief in myself and the universe because it's not just me right it's the, it's what I'm co-creating with I know that I can achieve absolutely anything that I set my intention and attention to that conviction is everything absolutely and that that's the bit that most people miss <laughs> so you know, you go like, yes, I think I can do this and I'm working towards it. And then the doubt comes in. But I don't know, because Aunt, Aunt, Auntie Jo over there says she doesn't think it'll work. And Uncle Mike said his friend tried it and it didn't work for him. And then people get into the fear and the doubt. And all of that, if you think of it like a castle that you're building, all of that that you built just comes crashing to the ground again. So then you have to start again. So it's holding that focus that 100%, not thinking, not believing, but knowing that it will come into reality. That and is every time I've done that in my life, it has. And when I haven't, I can go back and go, oh, I see where I got into fear there. <laughs> so you can always see, and that this gives you more, I guess it gives you more to build on to know where you got into fear and doubt and to know where you held steadfast to that knowing that it would come into reality. That is so, I think you just nailed the key for manifestation. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all those things that, that there's so many things that when I learned more about spirituality that I'd be like, oh, that has a name. Oh, mm -hmm. that's what you call it. And things that I just done naturally from when I was small that I, I was like, doesn't everybody do this? And even in working with people, that's what I've discovered is that most people that have a gift are so unaware that it's a gift. They think that everybody does it. And it's like, no, <laughs> most people can't do that. What you're doing is a unique gift to you. That is one of the gifts that you came to this planet with. The ability to do things so easily that you don't even notice it's a gift, <laughs> right? You can just like, doesn't everybody do this? It's like, no. No, they don't. <laughs> yeah, it is. That is, yes, you're so right. Like they don't recognize. It's like you can't see your own self in the mirror. 
Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And then when you do, it's like, wait, I've done this for so long mm -hmm. already. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And that, that's what I love to encourage to bring out of people so that they can begin to see this is what, you know, right at the start when we're saying to see the unseen, because it's so easy to them, they don't even see that it's a gift. So is that a place that people can start with? Like if, how do they discover who they are? Yeah, there's so, the, gosh, there's so many pieces to that. Cause, because if you're doing something so easily, you probably won't recognize that it's a gift. So sometimes you need somebody else to guide you through that, to show you these things. Cause you know, blind spots are called blind spots because we can't see them, right? So you can spend a lifetime walking through that and never actually be able to see it. So sometimes you need guidance I mean we all need guidance right we all need guidance all of the time but to be able to see those things but really I guess the place to start is to consider like what comes really easily to me that I absolutely love to do maybe other people talk to you about it and go oh you're so good at xyz right and it's just so natural and you just do it for fun. Like these are like the, li the little stepping stones, if you like, that are like going, you might want to have a look at that, <laughs> right? So that's a really good place to start is just to look at those things. Yeah, the, the, yeah your own gifts are sometimes hidden. Mm -hmm. And the way to start that process is to just say, okay, what can I, what do I do naturally and easily that... Yeah. Yeah, it's so funny we say that because so many times we assume that, oh, yeah, everyone does it. Mm -hmm. Doesn't everybody mm -hmm. think that way? Doesn't everybody mm -hmm. feel that way? And that's mm -hmm. not true. It's, yeah, in so many different areas. And like even we're talking with my my children about dream time, like my, my older sons are in their 20s now. And when I spoke with one of them and he would we were talking about dream time and he would say, well, because he's very gifted in maths, physics, the sciences and things. And even that, it's like, that's not normal, the level that you take it to. But he thinks, you know, like, doesn't everybody think like this? And it's like, no, I don't see the world in equations like you do. I see energy fields, you see equations. It's, it's just fascinating, like how different it is. But he shared with me that if he couldn't solve an equation, like when he was doing his, his maths work, he would go to bed and go to sleep. And he said, I always found the answer to the equation in dream time. I would discover it there. You went, I thought everybody did that. And I was like, no, <laughs> that's like a massive gift that you have. So because he'd never spoken about it with anybody, his interpretation was like, oh, this is what everybody uses dream time for. And it's like, no, most people just go to sleep. <laughs> They're not off discovering equations or finding out things about the quantum field. And he's away doing all of this in dream time and just assumed the rest of the world was doing that as well. <laughs> wow so have you actively talked to your kids about dream time yeah yeah I talk about all of all of these things to them and it's it's funny because my most <laughs> my most famous comment from it was my second son because we pull an animal card every year like for guidance for the year and my younger two were always really into it you know and even though you tell them, it doesn't matter what card you get, it's about the message, it's about the lesson. Of course, they're still sitting there going, I want mountain lion, I want black panther. It's like, it's okay if you get onto a spider, they have their lessons too, right? <laughs> so even though we explain all of that to them, they still, you know, they, they still want the ones that they want to get. However, when I asked my second son, who was probably about 14 or 15 at the time, um because he was in the room now I was like do you want to pull a card for guidance for this year and he said I will pull an animal card when the rabbits in the forest are sitting pulling human cards <laughs> I was like okay then you have your pup I have mine and this is it like they they get to choose exactly what they want to choose I get to choose you know there's no like oh you have to believe what I believe and everybody gets to choose the path that they're on. But since then, he's actually changed a lot of how he thinks because he's watched me walk the path. And he started to experiment with certain things. And then he started going, maybe there's some truth to this stuff that you teach us about. I was like, yeah, I think. <laughs> so he's actually started to experiment and be a lot more open with things as well. So 
all you have to do is just again it's show up as your authentic self be you walk your own path let other people have the experience that they're going to have and however it's going to turn out is however it's going to turn out and that is the opposite to how I was like 25 years ago because I was controlling absolutely everything whereas now I'm like I don't know I even look how even how we're doing this podcast episode we're like I have no clue where it's going to go. I don't know what we're going to talk about, <laughs> but I trust it's going to go where it needed to. Whereas if I'd done this 25 years ago, I would have needed bullet points, a spreadsheet. <laughs> I'd have had to have everything in its little boxes and it would never go to where we're going currently. So there's oh. such magic and just, just let go, just let go. Yeah, there's so much magic in allowing and letting things be and unfold because we're having such amazing conversation right now. <laughs> and as we're talking, there are two topics that I want to absolutely bring to the audience, mm -hmm. um, especially with with moon cycle, which you are the mm -hmm. goddess, like in, in listeners, like we call Eichel the goddess, by the way, <laughs> she's our goddess. You have that vibe to you, the, the goddess vibe. So share with us about your moon cycle. You have a group that you run. Yeah. Yeah. And you see, that was, again, it was following, right? Because you know, when you're like, you never know where anything's going to go and you just have to keep putting one foot in front of the other and trusting that it's going to go somewhere. Because if you sit there wondering, where's this going to go to? I don't know where it's going to go to. Like you lose so much time trying to figure it out. And if you just take one step, it's going to lead you to somewhere. So this is very much how the moon circle came about. So it's like, it's off the traditional idea, the ancient idea of women coming together on full moons to be in circle with each other, to share, to be in ceremony, to, to be in ritual, to be in that energy of each other as women. And I found that there's not... Or there wasn't because the moon circle's been going for nearly four years now. Lovely. Right? It's like, that's crazy. Like how fast that four years has gone as well. And the people that have been through and, and the, the, the changes that they've made in their lives. But it all began from trust because, you know, I know you'll understand this when you receive a message, right? You receive guidance, however you want to phrase it. And my guidance was you need to work with the moons. And that was that. That's all I got. And I was like, what the frick does that mean? <laughs> Can I have some more steps. Can I have some more information? What does that mean? So there was so much trust in just following the breadcrumbs. Like, what does that mean? I don't know, but I'm just going to keep. And all of these things started to align and work out to this place where it was like, okay, I'm just going to invite some women into this circle with me. And I just sent DMs like, hey, I'm doing this thing. Feels like you might be aligned. What do you think? And everybody I asked was like, yeah, I'd love to. And it's like, okay, then here we go. <laughs> and that's literally where it started from. And all the head talk, I can't do this. Who am I to do this? Who am I to speak on moon cycles? Who am I to lead women? All of that head chatter was insane, like so, so loud. But I had to focus on the end result that I was here to be of service, to be of guidance, to allow these women to see in themselves what I could see in them so that they could go into the world and be authentically themselves without going through all the stuff that I went through, right? Trying to fit in and pretend and not feel like you had a safe space to express yourself. So it, it works off that principle of coming together in circle, but because it's 2022, we do it on Zoom. <laughs> it's not it's not in person because there's people from every corner of the globe in that circle. It's absolutely phenomenal. So we come together on Zoom in circle. And to be honest, what has transpired, and again, didn't know this when I was going to start, is I receive like a message or a word about that moon. And then I begin to talk on that and I just allow what needs to come through to come through. I be the channel for the information that comes through on those moon cycles. So every moon cycle has its own energy. You know, it's not even like all full moons are like this. Every full moon has a different energy. It has a different message. It has a different frequency. 
So I've allowed myself to be in that space where I'm like, okay, I just need to get out of the way and trust that there's a message within this that's coming through me that somebody in the circle needs to hear. And the amount of times, like, I, I don't even remember what I've said, right? I'm like, <laughs> no clue. I'll just go for like 45 minutes. No clue what I've said. And people will say afterwards, like, oh, you were talking directly to me. That was everything I needed to hear right now. And this is what I mean about like getting out of your way, getting out of your head. Because if I sat there and thought again, like, this is crazy. How could I channel? Like, what? Wh where are these words even coming from? I can't be in that space to be of service. To be of service, I have to get out of my head and into my heart and just trust that everything is unfolding exactly as it's meant to because as soon as you start thinking about it all the stories you had from childhood all of your logical stuff that can you I can't do this this is bananas you know like this is insane I cannot do this so you have to let go all of your past history everything you thought you knew to be true you let it go and you just trust and take one step after the other and where that can lead you to if you're in alignment with your authenticity is to be of immense service to this world and that is my my greatest gift really that is the biggest blessing that I could ever have is to know that something I have said or something that I have done has changed somebody's perspective has allowed them to go like wow I never looked at it that way before that is that is the greatest gift we can have, especially as coaches or guides. That's that's phenomenal, right? That's the the ultimate for me. This is so beautiful. Like this, <laughs> it, like this is people listening to this. You have to rewind this and hear this over and over and over again. Like how when you get out of your own way, what how much magic unfolds through you. Mm -hmm. Right. Because it's not for us to question what it is, no. you know, to sit there and go, who am I to do it? I always say, who are you not to do it? You know, this gift has been given to you where you can be of service to other people. If you don't do it, you're actually harming other people because you're not allowing them to receive what they need to receive. So I can't I can't get in my head about it. It's, it's absolutely cra as crazy as it felt to start with. Right? So it's like. I just can't get in my head because I know somebody out there needs this. And that's what I focus on. That is beautiful. Like when you step out of your own self-importance and focus on what someone that's else it. needs. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. Yeah. So and it's, it's so funny with the moons as well, like you're saying about moons and it seems to be happening more frequently now where people are like, so can you tell me some stuff about moons? Because I feel like they might be affecting me. Whereas years ago, people were like, oh, it's all woo-woo nonsense. Moons don't affect me. <laughs> right? yeah. But yeah. people just can't deny it now, I think, because even the energy on the planet, people are becoming more sensitive to it and are starting to see that things do affect you. And even it's always been known it's this is not some new like new age esoteric thing about the moons this is ancient ancient practices like people have known about this for millennia like how affected we are by the moons it's just we've some become so disconnected from nature and being part of nature and nature cycles that we've forgotten all of the magic, all of the guidance that can come just from being connected to nature itself. Yeah, it's, I'm speechless. <laughs> <laughs> how do you start, you brought up your children multiple times, like how do you start, this was my second question, like how do you start bringing these things to children because most of my listeners are, are, are parents. Mm -hmm. And they're really yeah, a big big part of it is seeing where they naturally gravitate towards. So my second son, who I mentioned about like the human cards thing, actually growing up, we used to call him nature boy because his his greatest pleasure was to be outdoors in nature, studying animals and all. So you could see that he was 
that way inclined, even though during teenage years, he was denying it to himself. I could see those gifts within him. So whatever they are interested in and focused on is allow them to explore that however they want to. So I mentioned like my eldest son is more into sciences and maths and, and all of that side of things. And he's fully leaning into and exploring that now. So it's not like going, oh, well, this child needs to be into nature. It's like allow the gifts that they have and the expression of who they are to naturally come out in themselves and encourage it. You know, the opposite of like when it was shut down in me to explore it. You know, what I mean, <laughs> I'm laughing because like to, uh, to other circles outside, they'd be like, you crazy but just last week me and my, me and my daughter were standing outside talking to owls because there's an owl like on our property woo wooing and we would woo woo back right yeah. so that's just naturally in her she just stood there started talking to the owl the owl started talking back oh so God. anything like that rather than going like what are you doing why are you talking to an owl oh my god what if somebody hears you right <laughs> don't do that <laughs> just allow them to explore and experience like the amazingness of life itself especially nature you know like go outside in the dark and let them see the vastness of the stars and the planets you know all of those things let them experience these things let them have that sense of wonder and magic and encourage it so it's not stuffed down mm -hmm. so that it's not like we don't do that kind of thing you know all of, all of these messages we so often receive is usually tied back to what would other people think if they knew it's like forget that just be the fullest expression of who you are and let that guide you to where it's going to take you and as a parent encouraging whatever that is however that looks for your child because it's I've got four children and they are all totally different you know the way that they express their gifts spiritual what I see as spiritual gifts that is naturally in them you know like one is an artist one is you know like they're all completely different but I've never like gone well because your brother is like this, you should be like that too. It's like, just allow the fullness of who they are to develop. That's that. That's such a joy as a parent is to just be there to nurture, to guide and allow them to develop what is naturally in them. Yeah, so beautifully said. And in, that's where they can start to allow themselves to be in alignment with who they are they don't have to exactly. wait for themselves to find right. go after going through all the ups yeah. and downs yeah. and it's it's so interesting because it's it can be so my daughter is 13 so it, even as something as simple as this like she was choosing a uh, case for her phone like a new case for a phone and she really liked one and then she went through and she chose this really plain one and I just asked a question I was like you know, like what's causing you to choose the plain one when you were clearly interested in that one over that? Well, nobody else at my school has ones that are different. Everybody has these plain ones. I was like, okay, I understand that. But do you want to allow other people's opinions to stop you from having something that you really like? And she sat with that and I would be fine. Like she could have asked for the plain one or the one that she really wanted. Whatever, she, you know, like whatever feels good to her is good to me. And she came back two days later and she said, you know, I'm going to go for that one that I really liked because I should just be me. And I was like, <laughs> job done. <laughs> right. I mean, like any time the, the, like the conversations I have with my children as they've developed, although often really challenging because children will challenge beliefs and stories that you didn't even know you had about yourself. Right especially as they become teenagers and young adults and beyond. But every time I've had those conversations, I've been so proud and so happy because I'm like, that is exactly the kind of being that I was looking to raise. You know, somebody that would question, like, why are things done this way? What is it this way for? Like, can't we do it a different way? And I was, I'm always secretly going like, Yes, <laughs> because that was always my intention was to allow them 
to come up like freely and not be put into boxes of this is who you are and this is how you'll show up in society and this is the label you give yourself just allowed them to develop into who they came here to be and that that is honestly the greatest gift you can give your children so true so true and if we can start at an early age it is so yeah one of the things you taught me was like um it was one of the things that you had said um about teaching a child to be if you don't teach your children to be in silence mm-hmm. you know what I'm talking about mm-hmm. yeah yeah that yeah. like in nature like being yes. in silence, like in the forest yes yeah yeah so like you know we've been fortunate enough for, to be able to raise our children in a very rural environment where they just could run wild in trees forests meadowlands like everything so they spent an awful lot of time in nature growing up and that was one of the things that they practiced was too that was one of the things that I taught them from because again people would go that can't be done you can't teach a five-year-old to sit still and be quiet And I would teach them about the musicality of nature. And when they focus and tune in on that, they have no problem sitting silently because they're not really silent because they are surrounded by the birds, the wind, the river, all of these things that are talking to and interacting and connecting with them. But to really connect to that, to be in tune with that, you have to be in silence within yourself. So all of them... All of them could do that from a very early age. You know, we would practice things like um, working through all your senses. So sitting there with your eyes closed, describe to me how you can feel the wind, you know, like how, how can you tell the wind is here without actually seeing it? So they would work through that. How can you, what can you feel right now? And they'd describe sitting on, you know, like the old wooden chair and how it felt solid and rugged and just all of these things, like really connecting to the senses, really connecting to everything that is within their environment is really connecting to within themselves, right? Because if you just, you know, I mean, like our children go on games and have screen time and everything else. It's not like they're They're not growing up in a tree in the forest by themselves. You know, they have the full spectrum of all the things, but it is so important to give them the gift of stillness. I can't hear you. What's happened? Oh, I have myself on mute because... (laughs) It's like, is it me? What is happening? I have a dog at home and I didn't know it was going to bark or what. Oh, okay. (laughs) So um, I did that recently with my kids. We took them hiking and they they had chat chat. They're big talkers. And I was like, okay, for five minutes, we're going to walk in silence. And I want you to pay attention to things that you notice. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to tell me. So I got that inspiration from you. And the things my daughter said, I can hear the wind dancing with the grass. I was like, wow. oh my goodness. And then my my son was like, I connected with the ancient ones. Wow. It was in like five minutes. I was like, okay, we need to do this more often. Wow. And that's it. If you're, you know, and it's it's not that we don't want our children to talk and chatter and stuff, but there's a time and place for everything, right? We can be one way and we can be another way. And integrating those different parts of ourselves is so important. Yeah. But yeah, would they have picked up on that if they had just been in constant chatter? Right. Yeah. So that's something that was so beautiful. And so I thank you. Thank you for wow, that's incredible. inspiring me to do that. <laughs> yeah, it's mind blowing. So yeah. actually, can you tell us how people can find you and work with you, especially with your moon goddess circle? Yes. No, the best way to connect with me is on Instagram. I'm quite active on Instagram. So that's just under my name, Eichel Francis. And you can find my website under the same name, EichelFrancis.com. Or you can just message me on Instagram, you know, like the moon circle opens at different times of the year. It's currently open now, but it probably won't be by the time you listen to this. So um, you can join the wait list if that is something that you want to join or you just want more information about just you know like I am an open book just 
connect with me, message me. I am always very, very happy to hear from people. Oh, I love that. I love that. It's such a, such a gift to everyone. And it's open to all genders, I assume, right? It's not. Just... The moon circle is women only. Oh, yeah, really? the, yeah, it is. It is. I even, I even did a poll on that because I was like, are we opening to all genders? And I asked the current circle and they were very clear it was a no. <laughs> they wanted to keep it as a women only space. But I do have different ways to work like with men outside of the moon circle as well. So I, I, I do work with men. It's just not within the moon circle. <laughs> Got it. Got it. But so anyone can reach out to you and work. Absolutely. With you. Absolutely. Great. And I'll put that in the show notes too. Thank so you. Any parting words of wisdom for the listeners? Ooh, I don't know. We went so many different places today. I love <laughs> I feel, it. I feel like we weaved a little path all over the place and then came right back to the start again. So um, of all the things we spoke about, I think the most important is to be yourself. And you think you might think that you're being yourself, but are you really? Because I know so many people that I call chameleons and they will change shape and form according to the circle with which they are in. And what was a game changer for me, and this is only five, six years ago when I really stood in this, was what if I just show up as who I am everywhere in my life? So I stopped being one person like in my you know, one person in my business and then a different person when I was at home and a different person when I was, you know, like with friends, it was like, I'm just going to be who I am everywhere. And energetically, that was one of the things that opened the biggest gates for me because it was really authentically saying to the world, to the universe, the multiverse, like, this is who I am, like, take it or leave it. Not everybody is going to love me. I know that. And I'm absolutely fine with that because the more authentically you can be yourself, the more you will attract your vibrational match. Amazing. That's beautiful (laughs) words of wisdom. And that's what I wrote down, alignment with your own self. Mm -hmm. The more aligned you are with your own self, the more you can. Often underestimated. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I told, thank you. Thank you for your time. Oh, you also have a podcast, don't you? I do. Yes. Yes. I do have a podcast. It's called Aligned Alchemy with Rachel Francis. (laughs) I love that name. Yeah. All about alignment. And that really is what the podcast speaks about is like the alchemy, the magic that happens when you just show up and be yourself. Beautiful. I love this. This I, I love the name. I might title uh, this episode uh, that. <laughs> yeah, no, that that came through in dream time. That was it. That was a dream time message that that was what the podcast had to be called. I was like, okay, then who am I we to question? To, I just go with it. We have to do a repeat episode, a repeat guest episode with dream time, specifically for dream time. <laughs> right. I think that would be, I'm going to make a note of that. Yeah, I would <laughs> love that. <laughs> December <laughs> planet. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. No, thank it's you. It's an absolute honor. And it's always a joy to be in your energy field. Always. Oh, thank you.